Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. In the last video, we discussed how to prepare and export multi-tracks from Logic Pro to send to your mixing engineer. This is probably the most common method of sharing files with a mixer, but sometimes you might want to share your entire Logic project with an engineer or with another collaborator. Here's the method for making sure the transfer of full Logic Pro projects goes as smoothly as possible. Again, with this method, the key is good communication. Definitely ask your mix engineer if they are okay with you sending a full Logic session to them for mixing. Not every engineer will want this. But if your engineer is okay with receiving a Logic project for mixing, you'll need to discuss the plugins you are using in your session. Your engineer will need to have all of the plugins you have used in your session on their system in order for the shared session to play back properly. This is especially important if you have used virtual instrument plugins in your session because that's the sound of the whole track. So make sure to find out right from the beginning if your engineer has all of the plugins you have used. The easiest way to do this is just to write down a list of all the plugins you've used in your session and send that over to your mixer before proceeding with this process. Your goals for this process are to deliver a well-organized project that has as small of a file size as possible and will work seamlessly on your mixer system. The first step is to save a new copy of your session. This is crucial so you can make this new project file streamlined for transferring, but still retain your original session for use on your system. I recommend saving your project as a package and not as a folder for easiest transfer. If your project is already saved as a package, you can go to File, Save a Copy As, and it will copy your entire project package, including all relevant audio files, to a new location. Name it with song title dash four mix and save it to your desktop or hard drive. If you had previously saved your project as a folder, you will need to go to file, save as, and choose package next to organize my project as. You will wanna check the box next to all of the options for copying files over, and again, name it with song title dash four mix and save. Now close your original project keyboard shortcut Command Option W, and then open the copied project file. Next, in order to save space, you will want to delete all project alternatives that are not final. Go to File, Project Alternatives, and Edit Alternatives. Shift click to select all of the alternatives before your final alternative and hit Remove. Confirm the delete and close the Edit Alternatives window. Next, you should bounce out your reference mix. This is a final bounce of the song from where you left off. Your mixer will want this as a reference to both make sure nothing is missing from the transfer and to reference while mixing. This is to make sure they are improving upon the sound and staying true to your vision. Select the entire song length with the cycle and bounce the project. Do this bounce in wave format with the same resolution and sample rate as the project Make sure normalize is off and hit OK. Save this in the same place you have saved the project file so it doesn't get lost. At this point, you're ready to start organizing and cleaning up the session. Delete any unused tracks or muted regions. Also delete any hidden tracks. If you haven't done so already, it is nice to create markers for each of the sections of your song. You can do this by clicking the disclosure box at the top, then place the playhead on the beat of the start of a new song section, and press the plus icon next to marker. Alternatively, you can play through the song, and when a new song section starts, you can press the keyboard shortcut option apostrophe to create a new marker. Name these markers with the name of the song section, verse 1, pre, chorus, etc. Next, you should go through and name all of your tracks simply and clearly. Just like with the multi-track export, name them with the name of the instrument only and append with a number when it is a layered sound. To quickly switch to the next track while renaming, hit the tab button instead of the enter button when finished naming a track. This is also a good time to make sure your tracks are ordered logically. You don't have to go overboard with this as your mixer will likely have their own methodology for organizing sessions, 
but it's nice to group similar tracks together in the edit window. All the drums together, all the vocals together, etc. Next, you will want to flatten and merge any comp files you have. This will help save on space and take out any guesswork for your mixer about which take you want to use in the final mix. One thing to pay close attention to when organizing your project is how you have routed and labeled your buses. This is the area where I find things can get very confusing very fast. Here's what I recommend. In the mixer window, scroll all the way to the right to view your aux tracks. Make sure they are all named according to the effect that is on them. Then double check that all of the created auxes are in fact being used in the session. Click on the input at the top of the bus channel strip, and if there are tracks routed to it, Logic will show them listed after the arrow pointing to the bus number. If there are no tracks listed after the bus number, the bus is not in use by any tracks and can be deleted. Then to make double sure everything is organized properly, shift click to select all of the aux tracks and then hit control T to create tracks for them in the edit window. Move these new tracks to the bottom of the edit window. And if you have any track stack summing buses, make sure those auxes are placed above the tracks that are contained within that track stack. Now it's time to bounce out any tracks that use plugins your mixer does not have. Again, be sure to communicate with your mixer about which plugins they don't have so you know which tracks you need to bounce out. This is especially important with virtual instruments and virtual samplers. For example, I'm using Native Instruments Battery to create a lot of the drum sounds in this session. Since Battery is referencing the drum samples off of my sample's hard drive, even if my mixer has the battery plugin, these tracks will not play back on a different system. That's because my hard drive and thus the drum sample files will not be there. They're here in my studio. To solve this issue, I will bounce and place these battery tracks. Select the track header and then right click on the first region. Select bounce in place. Name the track with the instrument type. Choose to delete the source since your mixer will not need that. Do not bypass the effects plugins. Do include the audio tail and file. Do not include the volume and pan automation. This option will print the volume and pan automation into the new audio file. We don't want this. With this option unchecked, the volume and pan automation from the original track will just be copied over to the new track in the edit window so it can still be adjusted. Make sure normalize is off and hit OK. Then repeat this process for any tracks with plugins that your mixer does not have on their system. Once this is done, it's time to clean up the unused audio files to reduce our project file size. Go to Window, Open Project Audio. Keyboard shortcut for this is Command 8. In this window, go to Edit, Select Unused. This will select all of the unused audio files still saved in the project folder. Hit delete on your keyboard to get rid of them. After this, go through the list of the remaining audio files and pay attention to the location column. You want to make sure all of the audio files are saved in the same location that your project package is saved. If you find one that is saved somewhere different, right click and choose copy slash convert file. Then in the dialog window that pops up, save the file in the audio files folder of the project package. This option should automatically come up when you choose copy convert. Use the original sample rate and bit depth, WAV or AIFF for file format, no change for stereo conversion, and none for dither type. Then double check that the change file reference in project audio box is selected, as this is needed for Logic to change where it searches for the file, and ultimately it is what will make the track work properly on your mixer system. Now you have a well-organized and tidy session to share with your mixer. Have a final listen through of your session to make sure that everything still sounds as you intended and that nothing was lost during the cleanup process. For example, I noticed that this drummer kit track stack was not routed properly. So I wanted to fix that so my intended routing is sent to the mixer and there's no guesswork on their end. Then navigate to where you have saved the project package and your reference mix, select them both, 
right click and hit compress. This will create a zip file that you can then share with your mixing engineer via whatever protocol works best for you. The great part about sharing your session like this is that your mix engineer can pick up the process right where you left off. Also, I find it's a great way for a mixer to better understand you as an artist and as a producer by getting an inside look at your session. If the process I laid out is followed exactly, I find sharing Logic Pro sessions to be easy and rewarding. So if you and your mixer both use Logic Pro, consider sharing your entire session with them. If you have any questions about this process, please leave a comment below. I'd be glad to answer them for you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.